Welcome friends. Namaskar. Now we are going to study some of the formulae or formulas for calculation of Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. <clears throat> we know that the first formula given by Carl Pearson is by definition and that is coefficient of correlation is the ratio of covariance of x and y to the products of the standard deviations of the x and y. We are very well aware that covariance of x and y is the mean of products of the deviations taken from arithmetic mean. If we substitute this formula of covariance into this one, we can have again a new formula that will be sigma x minus x bar into y minus y bar divided by n this much is covariance divided by sx into sy that will give us coefficient of correlation. We can again simplify this formula if we substitute values of sx and sy in this formula we can have another formula sigma x minus x bar into y minus y bar upon if we substitute a formula of sx and sy, the simplified version will be under root sigma x minus x bar, the whole square into another under root sigma y minus y bar, the whole square. So we can, we should not or we need not calculate the covariance sx and sy separately. We can use the data directly for this types of calculations and if we substitute the available summations, we can have the coefficient of correlation. Another formula can be like this, if we simplify only the numerator, sigma xy minus n x bar y bar upon n into sx into sy. Uh, another, but my favorite formula, if we make other simplifications, then the formula will be n sigma xy minus sigma x into sigma y upon under root n sigma x square minus sigma x the whole square into under root n sigma y square minus sigma y the whole square. Really this is my favorite formula and favorite of many like me because in this formula to calculate the coefficient of correlation, we need only five types of different summations. Sigma x, sigma y, sigma x square, sigma y square and sigma x y. See, two summations are actually in re repetitive mode. Sigma x, sigma x, sigma y, sigma y. And sigma x and sigma y are nothing. They are the summations of the two variables which are directly available from the problem or question facing by us. Another three, sigma x square, sigma y square and sigma xy. We just have to prepare three new columns only. You can say that. A unique feature of coefficient of correlation is, it is independent of change of origin as well as change of scale. Change of origin means, if we add any constant value to the original data or we subtract any constant value from the original data, that is called change of origin. If we do this and say derive two new variables, u against x and v against y, then the coefficient of correlation between u and v will be exactly equal to the coefficient of correlation between x and y. This is a unique feature. When we have very large values or we have very small values, say uh, decimal values in three or four places, we can use this technique or we can get the benefit of this unique feature or characteristic of coefficient of correlation. We can convert x into u and y into v and then we can calculate the coefficient of correlation between u and v very easily. That will be nothing but the equivalent to coefficient of correlation between x and y. So the formula to calculate r between x and y is r between u and v and R between U and V, we can simply calculate through this type of formula n sigma uv minus sigma u into sigma v upon under root n sigma u square minus sigma u the whole square into under root n sigma v square 
minus sigma v the whole square we are aware that u is nothing it is just change of origin and or scale of x similarly v is also nothing it is also change of origin and or scale of y in this way through this any of these two formula we can calculate coefficient of correlation very easily but these formula are not useless we can use any of this formula to solve some unique types of small questions which can be very hard at a first sight but if we know this formula we can solve this type of questions very easily later on we are going to solve many that type of problems but first in the next lecture we will be using this this or say sometimes this formula to calculate coefficient of correlation and then we will go for small problems and then some unique types of problems for now this is over thank you very much